We want to bring back the whole gang. They were here with us earlier in Three versus Trish uh, to get more insight into this report. Uh, let me begin here with Jason Blair, our fundamental analyst. Jason, you have been bullish on this company. I know long term you're very bullish on this company, but give us your immediate reaction to what you just heard. So, so Trish, my immediate reaction is actually to chuckle a little bit because it, Walt Disney has this extraordinary track record of, exceeding, of exceeding Wall Street expectations. Over the past decade, it's either met or exceeded expectations every quarter but four. That was two during the depths of the of the credit crisis, and two when they're having a problem a couple quarters ago adjusting their their marketing their their marketing and promotion at the parks and resorts business. And what's interesting is that the median EPS beat over that period of time was three cents. And I, if I if I heard correctly, the the, the beat here is three cents. So uh, the reality is th these are probably pretty good numbers. However, you know the the actual street number is 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 usually well managed. Uh, we do think management has done a great job of managing expectations here and we do believe the fundamental you know businesses are operating quite well. You know Jason let me just ask you I mean we heard that the studio entertainment revenue that was what actually suffered while a lot of the other categories uh, did well. Theme parks revenue up 10 percent. Media net works revenue up 9 percent but again studio entertainment revenue being sort of the one black eye on this company sure. mostly attributable to John Carter. Will the Avengers make up for this as we move forward? Yeah, I, I think th this is the John Carter quarter. Uh, management said that they were going to have a $200 million write down, so the loss there is absolutely no, prize to no surprise to anyone. Uh, as we mentioned before, we believe the success of the Avengers, which could be the top three or, uh, three or four films uh, of all time, uh, is going to have a, a, a halo effect on the other Marvel films. So. For the next three to four years, you have a tentpole film coming out of Marvel, at least one, a tentpole film coming out of Pixar, plus you got Pirates of the Caribbean, plus you have the potential for Muppets 2, plus you're taking these Disney animated classics and re releasing them in 3D. So, what that means, the significance of that is that Disney's, studio, Disney's film studios is under less pressure to essentially take place high risk bets uh, mm -hmm. and high cost bets to essentially launch new franchises. You know, do we have Peter Lee still with us? I'd be curious to get his technical view on that. I understand, no, we don't have Peter, but let me go back over to you, Jason. I mean, from, you know, you, you have a buy on the stock. You like the stock very much long term. You know, you've said it. But just in terms of its performance uh, today, uh, right now and after hours, up about 2%, and what you anticipate this week, will it get much of a bump? Based on today's report. Yeah, Trisha, I'm sorry. I take I take you know aftermarket trading with a huge grain of salt. Uh, we, we do believe um, that you know Disney is priced. It, it's just, it's an extraordinary business. You've got these deeply entrenched businesses in ESPN and Disney, and we think it trades at an ordinary valuation. As I said before, my concern here is that the media group has really participated in this consumer rally of the past six months. And in fact, from the March 09 lows, the, the, the S&P 500 media index and the S&P consumer discretionary index have been almost exactly correlated. So what, what's happened is, as the stocks have risen, we've got our sense is that the investment community has increasingly embraced the recovery scenario. And the risk really there is that the consumer spending recovery Recovery is, is kind of mo moving along at stall speed here. Real personal income, real personal consumption expenditures, those are the primary drivers of media and advertising spending. So we have backed off. We've gotten a little bit more cautious on the group here. We still think that over the course of the cycle, Disney is positioned for 11% operating income growth. They're accelerating the share of purchase of the company. They raised the dividend by 50% last December. Uh, but for the group as a whole, it's had a huge move over the last six months. You know, I want to bring Andrew Keen back in. Andrew, how's that options trade working out for you? It's working out very well. This is right where I thought it'd break through. This 44 half level is very, very critical. What is resistance becomes support, support comes resistance. So 44 half level. I've been watching it trade on my phone for the last 20 minutes, so I've been standing here. It's been bouncing around this 44 half to 45.30 level. I just want to tell Peter, but he's not here, that I have a 69.50 offer in Disney right now, and I also have an <laughs> offer in Apple what at 9.99. So if it does <laughs> pop 30 bucks, I like it. We know Peter's going to buy it. <laughs> hey, playing it to the upside. Speaking of which, Jay. Jason, let me ask you, this stock right now trades at about 15 times earnings. It's already up 18% on the year. You know, realistically, how far can we expect the stock to rally from here? Sure. So the S&P trades at a 12.5, 12.7 times forward multiple. 
Disney trades at a probably a five percent premium to that. I think it's reasonable to assume that Disney trades at a, five, a 10 to 15 percent premium. It's a company that's generating, let's say, 17 percent EPS growth over the next couple of years. So you're probably going to get you know, double digit. I, I, I think our, our target price, in fact, is. Um, Pardon me. It's 50. Uh, stock closed around 44. So that gives you about 17 percent upside. Okay. Peter Lee is joining us. He is with us right now. Peter, your reaction to the earnings today? Uh, and I don't know if you caught Andrew Keene. He said he had an offer for 69.50 a share. Somebody was listening to you out there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I was watching the executions until towards the end of the day. The volume just exploded off of the last 15 minutes of trading. So I, I think someone's bidding up the stock here. Uh, positive outside. Day a, a major technical uh, a positive outside day occurred towards the end of the day. Very very impressive close to to Disney. Okay, this week it's looking good. Looks good. All right, going we're higher. Leave, <laughs> we have to leave it there. Thank you so much to the home gang. Thanks for joining us.